Fine. So today we are going to start this chapter oscillation, and we have how many chapters left? I think only oscillations and waves. Okay. So these are the two chapters that are left for us to uh, cover up, and oscillation will take around two and a half classes, and waves will take about again two and a half classes. So in about uh, one month. Uh, one and a half month your syllabus will get over fine so right now we are sitting on december of 25th so maybe first week of february your syllabus gets over and second week of february you have uh, your school exams so you can see how tight the schedule was we have just enough time to complete the curriculum okay so if you uh, start uh, demanding like can we have a longer break 10 days break 15 days break in between can we go on holidays you know then uh, we'll not be able to cover up the syllabus or at least then uh, then i will not be able to talk things in greater detail so syllabus is so wide that we cannot take a larger break now uh, if you if you uh, ask me that uh, why i mean do i like break or not i'll be the first person to take the break okay i teach around 9 to 10 hours every day so why i will not prefer a break right but then it is for you that we are uh, there to help you and be uh, available to you so that is why we are we are it is not that we are not giving you break it is that we are not taking the break okay it's so easy to take a break why don't i uh, prefer that isn't it and uh, one more thing we will be uh, will be done with the 11th in uh, maybe first week of february like i said and uh, the class 12th will start um, maybe um, mid of march or as soon as your class 11th gets over okay so that is what it is and uh, our class 12th syllabus will get over by october that is what the target is so that you have ample amount of time to revise class 11th then we have to run the crash course also which we are doing right now with our current class 12th students so crash course is like once we are done with entire 11th and 12th then uh, we will sit with you for every day problem practice three and a half hours every day monday to saturday and sunday will be the mock test for three months we run that program okay all right so let's begin has this chapter started in your school already has this started already no okay so uh, is there any chapter that is done in the school but we haven't done it no so we are ahead we are ahead okay anyways so write down this chapter's name oscillation now when do you hear about this word oscillations honestly tell me what is the first thing that comes in your mind have we done kinetic theory or not have we finished kinetic theory in centum no oh i actually i am teaching multiple batches so i wasn't aware actually in this batch so kinetic theory will take one more class so just before your school exams syllabus will get over then Okay, because one more chapter is left so after oscillation we'll do the kinetic theory okay all right so oscillations 
like most of you said the first thing that comes in your mind is pendulum okay simple pendulum now oscillation is a kind of movement that repeats after every time okay now if that is the case let us try to see what are the kind of motions that repeat after some time and what is the specific about these kind of movement okay so first we will talk about periodic motion like you said the example of pendulum is a periodic motion also right so can you first define what is a periodic motion try defining it all of you what is a periodic motion as per your understanding motion that repeats after some interval of time that is what someone is saying others a movement that repeats itself a movement that repeats now what what repeats movement repeats means what what do you mean by motion repeating itself are you talking about the displacement are you talking about velocity or acceleration which part should repeat what should repeat in a periodic motion displacement should repeat velocity or acceleration which one should repeat okay now when you are saying it when you were saying it that motion repeats that is actually more accurate than when i ask you which part of the motion is repeating because when you say motion is repeating it automatically means everything should repeat everything not just displacement velocity or acceleration each and every part of the motion should repeat okay so write down all all motion variables motion variables or parameters whatever you may want to call it repeat after a certain period of time okay right now when i say motion variable i mean to say position position should repeat wherever it was it has to come back the velocity should repeat acceleration should repeat and if there is any other thing like change in acceleration that also should repeat okay now what is this fixed interval of time is called certain in period of interval what is it called what is this called everyone ajay tell me something which repeats in 2 seconds will it repeat in 4 seconds or not something that repeats in 2 second it will repeat in 6 seconds also 10 seconds 12 seconds also if it is repeating in 2 second so the the period at which it repeats after itself is not fixed in a way right it is multiple of a minimum amount of time after which it repeats all right so the the minimum the minimum time for uh, repeating the motion repeating the motion is time period okay this is the definition of time period and it makes sense to define it for a periodic motion because it repeats after every time interval so time interval or time period is a very important parameter to look for 
okay now tell me few examples of the periodic motion pendulum is one of it what is the other example of periodic motion everyone any periodic motion you want to talk about anything you going to school is also in a way a periodic motion not as of now though rotation and revolution okay revolution of the heavenly bodies okay correct so the rotation of earth about its own axis is a periodic motion after 24 hours it repeats its movement about its own axis and after 365 days it repeats it its motion around the sun okay so you will be surprised to see that when you look around and uh, you see things very Uh, critically you will see that most of the movements are periodic only most of it it repeats after fixed interval of time whether you talk about stars planets sun whatever you want to see they repeat itself in fact we as humans also we have this tendency of repeating the same thing again and again okay and i mean that is little philosophical but if you look at the machines also all the machine they work on the uh, cyclic uh, movement which is a periodic movement itself and you have seen that in uh, in thermodynamics chapter the cyclic uh, the cycle what is that it is repeating after every interval of time okay so periodic motion is a very very integral part of our day to day life all right and that is the way that is a reason why we are studying it separately otherwise whatever we have learned till now about the kinematics laws of motion work by energy same thing can be used for the oscillations but since it is so prominent it warrants a separate treatment of the movement all right but we are in class 11th so we can't learn everything about the periodic motion so we will talk about a very specific type of periodic motion which is oscillations okay now can you tell us what is the definition of an oscillation i mean whatever comes in your mind okay you may be right or wrong but you should not sit quiet that is the worst thing you can do what is an oscillation what comes in your mind anything random that comes anything swings okay others pendulum comes again pendulum comes <laughs> never mind all right that is perfectly fine i mean that is how even in my mind also every time i hear oscillation pendulum comes but in general can you try defining it okay fine all right so periodic uh, the oscillation is a periodic motion only but a special kind of it a periodic motion ha huh. which is basically to and fro to and fro movement about a fixed point all right about a fixed point to and fro motion what does it mean just take an example of pendulum also what does pendulum do it goes around in this path right pendulum bob is here right now then it is there right now can you identify a fixed point for this pendulum where is a fixed point 
this is position a position b for the pendulum middle of it over here this is the fixed point about which what happens it goes away then comes back it goes away and then comes back so this is your fixed point for the pendulum all right this is the fixed point back and fro forth motion for the uh, pendulum like this all right now fixed point is a very important thing when you talk about the oscillations and remember when we talk about the uh, mo uh, revolution of earth around the sun there is no fixed point so it is a periodic motion only but it is not an oscillation okay this fixed point is the characteristic of all the oscillation so it's very important so there is a name to it this fixed point is called mean position this fixed point is called a mean position why it is called mean position what does it mean why the word mean A any guesses why the word mean mean is like the average yes mean as in average so basically whatever happens whatever happens on one side of it same thing happens on the other side so it makes sense because it is symmetrically placed always it will be symmetrically placed it will never happen that this time uh, this side something else happens and this side something else happens about the mean position whatever happens on this side same thing will happen on that side exactly same okay i mean i'm talking about an ideal scenario wherein there is no friction there is no air drag and all those things are absent only the pendulum and bob is there it will keep on doing this till infinity okay now uh there can be many types of oscillations as well all right the simplest kind of oscillation the simplest type of oscillation is simple harmonic motion oscillation another name is harmonic motion so the simplest of this is simple harmonic motion which is there in our curriculum the other kind of oscillations are not there okay so in this chapter we are going to study about this simple harmonic motion only okay in fact uh, most of the books have don't have a chapter name oscillation they will write simple harmonic motion or shm so don't get confused shm or simple harmonic motion is same as your uh, textbook chapter of the oscillations okay now let us see how the chapter is arranged then we can uh, probably again go back to the introduction of the chapter so there are three parts of the chapter part number 1 part number 1 is the kinematics kinematics of simple harmonic motion okay now uh one thing you need to understand that uh, your foundation of physics when we started the first few chapters were about the foundation of physics 
wherein we discuss about what is displacement what is velocity what is acceleration what is force what is energy what is kinetic energy and things like that we got a basic tools it's like we got a hammer we got spanner we got screwdriver in first few chapters okay now going forward the definition of what is force will not change definition of what is energy won't change whatever basics you have learned in first four or five chapters you're going to use it again and again for different different kinds of situations all right and you will be surprised to see that it will happen in class 12th also okay so here is a chapter in which what is happening is that there is a special kind of movement which is simple harmonic movement for that movement we are applying our knowledge of kinematics which we already know our knowledge of laws of motion which we already know and our knowledge of work energy power also for this particular situation and similarly you will see in class 12th you will study uh, electrostatics so you will again apply your knowledge of laws of motion on electrostatics your knowledge of kinematics on electrostatics and your knowledge of work power energy on electrostatics so things will become repetitive from here so the first four or five chapters are the most crucial chapters of your physics for entire 11th and 12th combined after that things are repetitive so part 1 like i said talks about kinematics of shn now why we are having kinematics of shn because uh aja we will discuss in greater detail later on about the kinematics but kinematics is what studying a movement without getting into cause of the movement so i don't care about how the shm has been created i have been given position time and velocity i may need to find acceleration or displacement after certain time so that is what the kinematics of shm is about okay part 2 part 2 of the chapter is the uh, major part of the chapter that talks about the cause causes of shn what causes a particular shn what kind of force creates an shn okay and what are the energy involved in the shn fine so we'll be talking about potential energy kinetic energy and you can use work energy theorem here also your basics won't change force will be still equal to mass m acceleration your work energy theorem still be same just that probably you will write potential energy in a different way okay similarly force also it may be a different kind of force but force will do mass m acceleration still valid this part constitutes about 80% of your chapter okay but many times i have seen that questions come from part 1 because students think that if i do part 2 well my 80% is taken care of 80% of syllabus gets taken care of but if i am the examiner i have to set questions what i'll do i'll think which topics students ignore and i'll frame a question on that topic because my aim is to eliminate my aim is not to select because there are many students right so first i'll eliminate and then select all right part 3 part 3 of the chapter it talks about uh, non ideal scenarios non ideal scenarios or situations so uh, we never uh, took care of the fact that there will be damping in the oscillation after certain time the oscillation will die down and will stop so in part 1 part 2 we don't care about it in part 3 we touch little bit about how these damping will come into effect and also about the forced oscillations okay 
so uh, here we are talking about more realistic scenarios so just to give you uh, one example when when the earthquake comes you might have seen in the televisions that some buildings uh, collapse easily some buildings don't even uh, you know get damaged at all the reason is because the natural frequency of oscillation for that building matches with the oscillation frequency of the earthquake because of that it starts fluctuating violently and that is why it get collapsed and most of the time the uh, the tallest building doesn't get affected because that uh, the natural frequency depends on the shape and size of a building so when it is tall then uh, we it is seen that the frequency of that tall building doesn't match with the frequency of oscillation of the earthquake okay so we are going to talk about uh, these things briefly okay but again we'll start from the uh, basics first that is part number 1 kinematics of shr okay now when we talk about the kinematics of shm we do not have any equation right now to start with we don't know anything all right so we need to first at least get one equation okay it can be equation for force it can be equation for velocity or acceleration right some equation to start or begin with we cannot keep on talking about oscillation philosophically that oscillation should be like this there are a lot of examples this and that all that is good to hear but not useful so mathematically let us see how we can uh, try to model it okay as in uh, till now you can see that till now whatever equations we have in physics we have seen the observation and based on the our observation we have come up with the equation like the way we have formulated uh, the force is equal to mass m acceleration we have seen that if there is an effort on what all things it should depend upon and that is the reason why force is equal to mass m acceleration okay similar kind of analysis let us do for the simple harmonic motion or any oscillation and see which mathematical relation fits for that situation okay so let us first observe what is going on we'll observe it critically critically means we'll be seeing velocity displacement acceleration and see uh, is there any relation okay let's see this let's assume that this is the path of the oscillation oscillation is happening about this path this mean position is exactly at the center this is o all right and there are extreme positions let's say p and q are the points till where the object goes and then comes back back and forth motion okay to and fro so can i say that object has to stop at p and q object should while it is going towards q like this it has to stop and q stop at q and then come back is that true that object should stop at p and q all of you agree or not till the shm is going on object must stop at q and reverse its direction of movement similarly object must stop at p and reverse its movement all of you agree with this any confusion type it okay so object should stop at p and q now if object stops at p and q the although mean position is an important parameter p and q also becomes important so we'll name that as well so p and q they are called extreme positions p and q are called extreme position o is the mean position 
and op distance is equal to oq distance and this is called amplitude amplitude of the oscillation a okay now tell me one thing that if i go like this turn back and reach there is it repeating the movement or not is it one complete oscillation or not what is the issue with this i have reached here itself so it isn't it repeating my movement is it not repeating my movement it should go to p also why my definition of the periodic motion is that the movement should get repeated i start from o and then came back one complete oscillation what is the issue with this periodic motion i am talking about what is the issue with this why it is not one complete oscillation everyone symmetry symmetry doesn't matter okay you should go by the definition is it a periodic motion or not is it a periodic motion or not not talking about oscillations here don't get into to and fro i am talking about is it one period or not one time period of oscillation i start from o and then comes back there is it not completing one cycle all of you type in are all the motion variables repeating itself when i go back at o all the movement all the motion variables displacement velocity acceleration they repeat itself or not is velocity repeating itself when i start from o i am going this way when i am coming back i am going that way is velocity repeating not getting it what i am asking okay i should take your names then ananya what is the issue anusha dev anusha dev and what name i have taken ananya dev bantia sometimes i wonder whether you guys are actually paying attention some of you might be eating i will not be surprised <laughs> there is a class going on you should have a complete attention no nobody is going to repeat it okay and you may think that you have a recording you can watch the recording later on ask yourself how many times you have watched the recording very honestly okay recordings doesn't help okay it is just to see things if you have a doubt at a particular lecture you can go back and see that thing again but if you miss the live thing then recording won't help you can see for past one year you had recording how many times you got benefited out of it okay so the ha huh, so velocity doesn't repeat direction of velocity is changed how can it be repeating so it has to go there this is first movement then it has to come back now everything is repeating except velocity so it is not one time period it goes like this goes like that so it has to go back to p like this and now when it comes back 
you will see that even velocity is repeating. Okay. Now when it comes back, even velocity is repeating. So in total, there are four distinct movement. Okay. These four movement will repeat in every cycle. O to Q, Q to O, O to P and P to O. Fine. So let us try to see a little bit more about the movement of it. So we'll draw a table like this, all of you. Draw it with me. Four columns it should have. Draw it like this. This is O to Q. O to Q. This is Q to O. This is O to P and P to O. Okay. All we have to do is uh, simply see the directions of the uh, position, the velocity and acceleration only. Okay. Now, before we uh, do that exercise, uh, we are assuming this direction to be positive and that direction to be negative. Keep that in mind. Okay. And I am tracing the position, not the displacement. There's a difference. Okay. So this is, you can assume that this is your X axis x axis o is the origin of the x axis when i say position i am tracing the x coordinate from the mean position if mean position is zero i am tracing x coordinate of where the object is okay so all of you we are talking about x v and a so write down x v a for all of it x v a x v a now for uh, o to q for o to q can you tell me x is positive or negative x coordinate positive or negative all of you should participate When I'm teaching very, very basics, all of you should participate. Otherwise, soon things will become advanced or difficult. Then you'll be like, yeah, I didn't pay attention, so I'm not getting it. So don't be in that sorry state. Participate right now itself when things are easy. X will be greater than zero. All right. Now, what about velocity? Velocity direction, positive or negative? Positive, it is also on the right hand side, greater than zero. Okay. Now talking about acceleration, should it get decelerated or accelerated when you go from O to Q? Everyone, should it get decelerated or accelerated? It has to stop at Q. It should get decelerated. So acceleration is an opposite direction of the velocity. So if velocity is positive, acceleration should be negative. Now Q to O, we are coming back. What about X? X coordinate. Q to O, X coordinate. How can it be negative? O to Q, all the X coordinates are positive. O to Q, all the X coordinates are positive. Wherever you go, doesn't matter how you're moving. One, two, three, four, five, all are positive. Okay. So Q to O, the X coordinate is positive only. What about velocity? 
velocity is less than zero. Okay. Now acceleration is in the direction of velocity or in opposite direction. Same direction of velocity or not? It is having zero velocity here. It is. It has stopped. So does it need acceleration to move this way? It needs an acceleration, right? So a is also less than zero because a is also that direction, and that direction is negative. Okay. I think some of you might have learned that deceleration is always negative and acceleration is always positive. That is uh, actually not true. Deceleration only means that acceleration is in opposite direction of velocity. Acceleration only means that acceleration and velocity directions are same. If velocity is negative, acceleration also negative, it means that object is accelerated, okay? All right, O to P, what about X? Negative or positive? X is less than zero. What about velocity? What about velocity? O to P. Negative. Acceleration. Acceleration is in the same direction of velocity or in opposite direction of it? In the opposite direction. So it has to get decelerated. Okay. Because at point P, it has to stop. If velocity is this way, acceleration should be that way for it to stop. Okay. Now P to O, the final thingy. X is positive or negative? Less than zero. Velocity. What about velocity? Positive, greater than zero. Acceleration. It is accelerated or decelerated? P to O. Accelerated, so well, acceleration is also greater than zero. Okay. So this is our uh, small analysis of how the things are in the case of the oscillation. Now I want you to see these relation and find out, is there a pattern? A pattern which is true for entire movement. Is there a pattern? O to Q, Q to O, O to P and P to O. Throughout it, there is a pattern which you need to identify. It's like a puzzle. Look at these values and tell me, is there a pattern? Okay, all of you can see that, huh, good, good to see that most of you have identified the pattern that X and A, 
they are always in the opposite direction yes or no all of you right so signs of x and a are opposite now this is true for any kind of oscillation or only for this simple harmonic motion this is true for all the oscillations or only for the simple harmonic motion everyone it is true for all the oscillations okay now if a and x are of opposite sign can we say that v and x have same sign while moving away from the mean position yeah you can say that but that is i mean that's not a pattern right because every time uh, there is a bigger pattern the bigger pattern is this x and a are of opposite sign that is so true but when you are telling that v and x have same sign while moving away from it that is that is becoming more specific to one kind of movement inside the shm it is not a pattern i will not say that uh, it's a pattern okay fine okay so the bigger pattern is x and a are of, of are of opposite sign so can i say that a is proportional to negative times x to the power n does it make sense will this take care of the fact that a and x are of opposite sign there is a minus sign it takes care of that fact okay so if i say a is equal to negative of some constant times x to the power n okay and belongs to integer this can take care of the fact that a and x are always opposite but there is an issue what is that problem what is the problem with this definition tell me there is a situation in which a and x need not be in the same direct uh, need not be of opposite sign what is that when the body is in mean position zero has no sign so a is zero and x is zero any other when x is negative okay correct correct so all of you if if x is less than zero if x is negative and n is even integer then what will happen to x to the power n will it be positive or negative if n is even and x is negative it will be greater than 0 so if this is greater than 0 then what about acceleration will it be less than or greater than 0 when you use this it will be less than 0 so you can see that x is less than 0 and a is also less than 0 that is not desirable okay n should not belong to an even integer okay so that's the reason why a is equal to minus some constant x to the power n 
where n belongs to odd integers only then only this is valid okay now this is the equation for the oscillation for any oscillation all right and for simple harmonic motion can you guess what is the value of n simplest n is equal to what smallest or integer is what one that you can answer one all right so we have shm equation as a is equal to minus c times x now one more thing can this constant of proportionality can it be negative can this c be negative no c has to be greater than 0 so if it if it is always greater than 0 i will be double careful how to be double careful you write your constant as square of something omega square x okay so this becomes your equation of the shm or shm condition equation should be equal to minus a constant square times x got it okay now tell me what are the locations in which acceleration is maximum a is maximum magnitude where a is max at what should be the value of x for which a is maximum x should be maximum and what is the maximum value of x amplitude right a is maximum at extreme positions okay that is what a is you can see that velocity is zero at extreme position but a is maximum and where a is minimum or a is zero a is zero at what at mean position where x is zero what about velocity is velocity maximum there is velocity maximum look at the movement till from o till it was coming to o it was accelerated as soon as it goes this way it starts getting decelerated okay so its velocity is maximum at o from q while it is coming to o it was accelerated and as soon as it go away from o it starts decelerated okay so that's the reason why the velocity is maximum at mean position and this is true not only for shm for every oscillation this is true okay so remember these few things okay so from here onwards your chapter from ncert starts okay so a is equal to minus omega square x is the equation from which the using which you can say the shm is there now if we talk about kinematics of shm do you remember equations of motion what are they what are the equations of motion v is equal to u plus at s equal to ut plus half at square and v square equal to u square plus 2as okay can i use them here 
can i use these equations for shn everyone if not why why is the question only when you say no if yes then you don't need to tell the reason because that is not correct we cannot use this the reason is that acceleration is not constant these are valid only for the constant acceleration okay so don't use these don't use them for shn don't even think about it okay now what other option we have do we have any other thing that you can use any other thing that we can use other than equation of motion can i use the differential form which is what v is equal to dx by dt a is equal to dv by dt a is equal to v dv by dx all of these equations are they valid for shm or not they are valid for shm or not these everyone they are valid for any situation i mean this is the definition of velocity and acceleration all right you can't say that no no velocity is not rate of change of uh, displacement you can't say acceleration is not rate of change of velocity because if that is not true nothing is true in physics that is a definition of it now if this is valid for any situation why we had equation of shm i could have used this for constant acceleration case also then why do i need that what is the reason why do why i needed equations of shm so equations of the motion why did i use them if i had calculus with me hmm why we learned these i could have used calculus to solve everything what's the reason no one knows easier to use as simple as that why will i break my head to again and again use calculus integral if acceleration is constant i can directly use it okay it's like if it's like you know uh, if you if i give you uh, let's say uh, if i give you wood you can make a table and chair out of it if you have ready made table and chair out of it why do you want to make table and chair from the wood daily and then use it okay you can directly use the wooden table and chair which is already made for your purpose so there's a reason why you know for constant acceleration is a very common scenario so for that scenario common scenario we have a set of equation you don't need to look at the calculus if acceleration is constant you can directly use it it is easier to use it and we have to teach you in class 9th also same thing so we cannot introduce calculus to you in right in class 9th itself so that's why uh, it makes sense to create these equations of motion now even for shm okay for shm also shm is also a common 
type of motion although acceleration is not constant so what we will do we will we will use calculus to derive equation of motion for ascension so that we can use them directly okay so let's try to see how we can derive it and then we will have some questions based out of it all right so the first equation is already known to you a is equal to minus of omega square x this is equation of motion itself a relation between acceleration and position x okay this is the equation of such a first one how will you derive a relation between velocity and x any guesses how you go about it we can write v as sorry we can write a as v dv by dx all right acha please take x is equal to plus minus a for amplitude sorry for the extreme positions okay extreme position a is the amplitude so can you try deriving it try deriving it yourself get the answer it's a simple derivation okay others done everyone hmm when you integrate you cannot integrate indefinitely otherwise there will be a constant of the integral also come in when you integrate okay so there should be limits upper limit lower limit so v dv is equal to minus of omega square x dx okay so when you integrate this you put the limits all right so what is the value of v when x is equal to a when x is a what is v v is 0 it was at rest let's say at x equal to x velocity is v all right so when you integrate it it becomes v square by 2 0 to v this is equal to minus of omega square x square by 2 a to x so put the limit it become v square equal to minus of omega square x square minus a square all right so v is equal to omega under root of a square minus x square
Okay, so this is the second equation of motion. First equation of motion is this. Second one is this. Second one is a relation between v and x. Okay, now you can see that the way it is different from your previous equations of motion, these three is look at it. Every equation has three variables: v, a, and t. S T A V A S and A is common in everywhere. All right, so you should know what is A. But over here, you have only two variables: A and X, V and X. So these equation of motion they are better than your previous equations of motion. All right, although it looks, uh, let's say. <coughs> And different because you are doing it for the first time. But if you ask me which one is better or easier to use, it is these ones. The variables are less. Okay, now tell me what is the maximum velocity? Maximum amount of velocity is how much? Look at this equation number two and tell me v max how much it comes. in terms of omega and a v max is omega into a it happens at x equal to 0 okay and it can be on both sides plus or minus while going this way plus going that way is negative so both directions so the way the shm happens if you look at it this is mean position the object goes like this and it turns goes like this and then comes back like that so everywhere you go let's talk about this position while going forward it is this way the velocity while coming back it is this way here also while going this way it is this direction while going that way it is this direction so at every point at every point the velocity can be in both direction it depends on whether you are going uh, towards the mean position or towards the extreme position so you will get two directions of velocity plus minus every x only at extreme position because velocity is zero you have only one velocity which is zero because it is at rest everywhere else if you tell me find out the velocity at x equal to 2 cm and amplitude is 3 cm then i'll tell you two answers one is positive other one is negative okay so remember that also so you have two equations of motion a is equal to minus omega square x and v is equal to this now we will bring in the time factor we haven't yet uh, brought the t in the equation so how will you do that how will you bring t in the equation any guesses correct so you write v as dx by dt is equal to omega root over a square minus x square okay and then you solve this differential equation how will you do that dx divided by root over A square minus x square is equal to omega dt. Okay. By the way, do you know how to integrate this? Do you know the formula for integral for this? What is integral of dx by a square minus x square? If you don't know, it is all fine. Just a formula. There is no analysis as such. Do you know how to integrate this? Okay, no one knows it. 
this integral is actually sine inverse of x by a it's a direct formula limits will be from 0 to t what should be the value of x when t is equal to 0 what should be the value of x when t is equal to 0 everyone t equal to 0 what is the value of x some of you are saying 0 some of you are saying 0 at t equal to 0 is it required that it should start from here only is it required that it should start and go like this everyone it is not required okay so it can be anywhere it can be anywhere need not be at x equal to 0 so we'll say at x equal to x naught t equal to 0 and this is x this is equal to omega t okay it can as well start from here go like this and like that it travels okay so it can start from anywhere don't assume that it will always start from the mean position t equal to 0 is the observer's discretion i can uh, start my stopwatch at any point in time and say that that is equal to t zero okay now when you put the upper limit and lower limit it will be sine inverse x by a minus of sine inverse x naught by a is equal to omega t okay this is the have you seen sine inverse before have you have you seen the inverse trigonometry function sine inverse half let's say what it is what is sine inverse half simple 30 degrees or pi by 6 okay so sine inverse of anything is an angle okay so we will say that let's say sine inverse of x naught by a is phi some angle phi which is the initial phase okay so sine inverse of this is x by capital a is equal to omega t plus phi so x by a is equal to sine of omega t plus phi. So we will get x equal to a sine of omega t plus phi. This is the third equation of motion. Third equation of motion is this. Right, and many times in your uh, questions, they will talk about write down the equation of SHM. All right, when you say when they say find out the equation of SHM, this is the equation of SHM. Okay, the relation between x and t. For some reason, this is called the equation of SHM. Now we have got what a as a function of x v as a function of x x as a function of time can we find out v as a function of time everyone what is v as a function of time can we find out that it's very easy differentiate with respect to time don't hesitate it's direct v is equal to dx by dt this is equal to what a omega cos of omega t plus phi okay so we have velocity as a function of time now all right can you get acceleration as a function of time just differentiate it a is equal to minus of a 
ओमेगा स्क्वायर साइन ऑफ ओमेगा टी प्लस फाइव दिस इज योर ए एज अ फंक्शन ऑफ टाइम सो यू कैन सी दैट ए साइन ऑफ दिस इज एक्स सो इट इट मैचेस प्रिटी वेल विथ एज गू माइनस ऑफ ओमेगा स्क्वायर एक्स राइट so instead of three equation of motion you have five to use so now we'll write it again all of them together everyone a is equal to minus omega square x v is equal to omega root over a square minus x square x is equal to a sin of omega t plus 5 then v is equal to a omega cos of omega t plus 5 and a is equal to minus of a omega square sin of omega t plus 5 so you have five equations equations of motion so you don't need the other three right so you can see all these equation they are standard ones just that when time comes t factor comes in there is this initial phase phi that is also part of the equation but when we write x as a function of a and v as a function of x it does not matter from where the particle has started okay but when you write with respect to t you have to find out what is the value of phi now talking about phi little bit so that it doesn't confuse you when you solve numericals so sin inverse of x not by a is phi now suppose if x not is equal to a by 2 What is the value of phi, everyone? If my SHN starts from x equal to a by two, from here, okay. So you are saying that sine inverse of half it will be. And this should be equal to pi by three. Sorry, not pi by three, pi by six. Now there is a mistake you guys are doing. The object can go this way from there, and it might be that it is coming back from there. Are these two situations same? Will the value of phi will be same for both? No, it is not same. so there are two values of phi for every position of x apart from the extreme positions there are two values of phi so pi by 6 and it can be pi minus pi by 6 right sin of pi minus theta is also sin theta only so it can be pi by 6 or 5 pi by 6 it can be both when it is going to this direction it is pi by 6 when it is coming back it is 5 pi by 6 now i can simplify it further to you the angle over here is zero if it goes this way then when it reaches the extreme position what the angle becomes phi will become what when x equal to a phi will become pi by 2 pi by 2 and when it reaches here again but in opposite direction it is pi so basically you need to think like this that as i go in this direction the angle should be between 0 and pi by 2 when i come back the angle starts increasing to pi and then when i reach here sin inverse of minus this is minus a x equal to minus a sin inverse Of minus one, you have to write, and this will be three pi by two. This angle is three pi by two. When I reach there, 
and when i come back it becomes 2 pi over here and 2 pi and 0 are same okay so again this is zero angle this is pi by 2 angle i come back it become pi the again 3 pi by 2 and then 2 pi so the angle of phi goes from 0 to 2 pi in entire cycle so you have to see where the object is and which direction it is moving is it clear to everyone type in just go through it once and let me know if it is clear spend one or two minutes will extreme position have only one value of phi yes because the velocity is zero there it's a unique value every other place there are two directions of velocity depending on which direction the velocity is the phi will be that slowly and slowly when you solve questions it will be you know it is something which is very straight forward you will get to know that or if you are little confused with this kind of thing what you can do is that you can check both x and v for the value of phi v for that value of phi at t equal to 0 the velocity should be negative if it is coming back so you can substitute the value of phi and check whether the velocity is negative or positive if it is positive it means it is going this way if for that value of phi if v is negative it means velocity should be that way fine so you can use both x and v also there is no one method of doing same thing it can be done in multiple different ways okay shall i move forward everyone okay so next thing we are done with the equations of the shm now we are going to use equations of shm we will be doing some analysis some numericals on it all right the first and most important thing that we have discussed in the first slide was time period which is what we need to find out time period of shm okay so if x is equal to a sin omega t plus phi using this equation can you find out the time period of shm all of you the hint is x should repeat for every value of time okay this is the graph of x and t all right so time period is what i'll give you a hint so suppose time period is capital t so can i write it like this omega t plus phi this is equal to a sin of omega t plus capital t plus phi can i write it like this 
everyone after time capital t it will get repeated so i'll add capital t to small t then same thing should happen again all of you agree okay so i can write it as a sin of omega t plus phi plus omega into capital t now i can equate it to a sin omega t plus phi if i equate it i'll get t equal to 0 but i can as well add 2 pi to it because 2 pi is the minimum cycle of the sign so even if i add 2 pi they should be equal so if i now if i compare it i get omega into time period equals to 2 pi or the time period of shm is 2 pi by omega so you can see how nicely it fits in omega square was a constant of proportionality in shm equation and the time period is 2 pi by omega so frequency is 1 by time period that is omega by pi is it all clear to everyone everyone please type in i have seen sometimes students say that omega is the angular velocity okay omega is one of the uh, symbols for the angular velocity but in the shm omega is not angular velocity omega is the name of that is angular frequency don't use angular velocity for omega 2 pi part once again see although these two are equal but if i equate it i'll get capital t to be zero okay so what is the minimum angle i should add here so that i can equate them you can uh, add 2 pi angle without affecting any value of this right i'm not changing t i'm adding 2 pi because it is sine function it will repeat after 2 pi adding 2 pi and then equating it so this and that they should be equal i could have added 4 pi 4 pi is equal to omega into t but that is not the minimum time when i add minimum angle here for which both are equal then only i'll get minimum t so that is my time period okay fine so this is the time period of shm now can you do one more thing i draw the graph between acceleration versus x for an shm you know that a is equal to minus of omega square x okay so i want you to draw a graph between a and x this is a and that is x try doing it
Done, everyone. What kind of graph you'll get? constant negative slope passing through the origin passing through origin okay so are you getting this this line this is not correct there's a difference between physics and mathematics. Why this is not correct? Because there's a limit up to which X can go. X cannot go beyond A and minus A. So you'll not get line, rather you get a line segment. Okay. X equal to A, X equal to minus A. A is, uh, this is omega square X, omega square A, this is minus of omega square A. This is what the graph is. Okay, a straightforward equation of a line it is, Y is equal to minus of MX. You have done it, I think, equation of a straight line. Now, I want you to draw velocity versus X. V is equal to, I'll write the equation here. V is equal to omega under root of A square minus X square. Try doing it. You have to be little analytical here. Don't blindly follow the mathematics of it. Just visualize how it should be and draw the graph. Approximate graph is fine. Good enough. The hint is first you draw the critical points velocity. Critical points are mean position, extreme positions. You have two extreme positions.
So at x equal to minus a and x equal to plus a, the velocity will be how much? Zero. So these two points will lie on the graph or not? Velocity should be zero. So I already know two points on the graph, plus a and minus a. Do I know any other point on the graph? Everyone? At mean position, what is the velocity? What is the velocity at mean position? Mean position is x equal to zero. At mean position, do you have only one velocity or you have two velocities? This is omega a and you have minus omega a as well. Two velocities. Okay. Now for every value of x, let's say if I draw a line like this, will I get two different velocities or not? For every value of x, one positive, one negative. Everyone? Type in, I get one positive, one well negative, one positive, one negative for every value of x. You can see here, one velocity while going this way, one velocity while coming back at the same position. All of you type in, is it something you're understanding? So if you join all the points, you are going to get a curve which is closed. Going to get a curve. Okay, I may not be able to draw a symmetrical curve, but it is a symmetrical curve. of last attempt this so you'll get an ellipse harsha why you joined after two hours harsha message so you'll get an ellipse okay all of you just go through it and let me know is it clear to everyone just read through it once again Harsha, you message why you joined after two hours. What do you mean overslept? Is it the time to sleep? 11 a.m. You, your school starts at 8.30. Okay. Is it all clear? Fine, we will now move a little forward. Next question is this. You have to, uh, you have to find the location at which Velocity is half of its velocity at mean position. Okay. Amplitude is given as A. In terms of A, you find out at what location the velocity is half of its velocity at the mean position.
Okay, Webho got something. Others? V is equal to omega root over a square minus x square. Velocity at the mean position is how much? At mean position, the velocity is at x equal to 0, omega into a. You have to find out x when velocity is omega a by 2, that is half of the mean velocity. Omega a by 2 should be equal to omega root over a square minus x square. This is what the equation is. Omega gone, it will be a square by 4 equals to a square minus x square. Now, you might be aware that for the velocity, same velocity can be this side can be this side, this way, and that way. So you can have two different values of x for same velocity because it is symmetrical about the mean position. So before even solving the problem, you should be aware that you will get two values of x plus and minus. Okay, then you should start solving. It should not be that after solving, you are wondering, okay, will I get two values? So x square is equal to 3a square by 4. So x is equal to plus minus root 3 by 2 times a. This is the answer. Okay. Let's proceed. Next question is uh, this. You have, uh, if you have any doubt, you can stop me, message immediately. I will answer it. This is O, this is plus A, this is minus A for the SHM, okay? There is a particle which is over here, okay? At t equal to zero, the particle is at x equal to a by two and it is going towards O like this at t equal to zero. You need to basically uh, write down equation of SHM. So what I mean by that, when you write x equal to a sine omega t plus phi, I want you to find out what is the value of phi for this situation. Initial phase is how much?
repeat the question at t equal to 0 it is here it starts going this way you have to find the value of phi i mean i think i have already told you that sometime back do it yourself the other way the velocity way not the way with in which i have told you try getting the value of phi by using the other method so we know that at t equal to 0 the value of x should be a by 2 and at t equal to 0 the velocity should be less than 0 negative velocity it should have okay so when you put at t equal to 0 for equation number 1 we will get a by 2 to be equal to a sin of phi so sin of phi being equal to half tells us that phi is either equal to pi by 6 or 5 pi by 6 phi should be between 0 and 2 pi it cannot go beyond 2 pi okay remember that then at t equal to 0 if i write equation number 2 velocity is a omega cos of phi now i have two options this and that For x equal to a by two, which one will give me velocity negative? Five pi by six will give me negative. So the answer which satisfies both the conditions which are required is the value of phi to be equal to five pi by six. I think this method is uh, you will be more in control if you use this method, although little lengthy, but you are in more control. Getting it? is everyone clear about this question all right so we'll take one more so you have uh, x is equal to 5 sin i'm reading the question only 5 sin pi t plus pi by 3 this is one of the equation of motion all right you have to tell me time period of the oscillation the maximum uh, velocity over here and you have to tell me velocity when t is equal to 1 second velocity at t equal to 1 second is how much do it
Okay, Webho got something. Time period, all of you got it. T is equal to what? What is the formula for time period? Two pi by omega. How much is omega for this SHM? Everyone, what is omega for this one? Omega is pi. You can correlate this equation a sine of omega t plus phi. When you correlate, you'll get omega as pi. So time period is 2 pi by pi, 2 seconds. Okay. Maximum velocity, what is the formula? Omega into a. Omega is pi. What is a over here? How much is a? a is 5. So 5 pi meter per second is maximum velocity. Now at t equal to 1 second, what is the velocity? How will you do that? How will you find this one? Hmm? Yes, you can say plus minus, why not? But I'm assuming we are interested in the magnitude of the velocity rather than direction of it. So what I'll do is that I will differentiate V is equal to dx by dt, all right? So I'll get five pi cos of pi t plus pi by three. At t equal to zero, the velocity is five pi, not t equal to zero, t equal to one, cos of pi plus pi by three. What is cos of pi plus theta? Cos of pi plus theta is what? This trigonometric identity minus cos theta. So this will be minus of five pi cos of pi by three. What is cos of pi by three? How much it is? Half. So minus of five pi by two meter per second. Minus means it is going on the left hand side. Okay. Is all of you clear? All right, so this is clear. One last question before the break. I don't want to take questions on kinematics after the break. We'll start something new. So here it is. There is a particle that starts SHM at it starts from x equal to minus of root 3a by 2. So this is the location at t equal to 0. And it starts moving towards extreme position. It starts from this position and goes to the extreme. That is the situation. All right. Time period of oscillation is given as capital T. Time period is given to you, capital T. In terms of capital T, you need to find out these three things. Equation of SHM, the time taken to go to the extreme, the extreme where it was trying to go and time taken to come to the mean position, time taken to come to the mean position. All right. Ajha. Apart from T, you have capital A that is also given to you and anything else you require? No, that's it. Find out.
can you tell me what is the value of phi in the equation of shm have you calibrated that as at least what is phi sin of phi is x by a in this case it is minus of root 3 by 2 now without even solving the question can you tell me anything about the phi between which two values the phi should be can you tell me can you guess between what all the value of phi should be it is 0 here pi by 2 here pi here 3 pi by 2 there and then 2 pi here between pi and 2 pi pi and 2 pi is a big range a smaller range will be between pi and 3 pi by 2 or between 3 pi by 2 and 2 pi which one it is here and is going this way between pi and 3 pi by 2 once you know that it becomes so easy to find out the angle of phi okay so now can you tell me what is the value of phi it will be pi plus pi by 3 that is 4 pi by 3 you can check that sin of phi sin of 4 pi by 3 is minus root 3 by 2 okay so it omega how will you write in terms of capital t what is the value of omega two pi by omega is a time period so two pi by time period is omega okay so you can substitute omega and phi you get equation of the shm this is part a part b how will you do just tell me how will you do that time taken to go to extreme any idea how will you proceed no equation is in front of you all you have to do put the value of x to be how much value of x to be you have to substitute the value put x equal to minus a you're going this way this is minus a x equal to minus a just put it over here and get the value of t okay it's direct it's from your textbook solved exercise this all right now if sin of 2 pi by capital t t this is equal to minus 1 sin inverse minus 1 is 3 pi by 2 okay so 2 pi by t into small t plus 4 pi by 3 is equal to 3 pi by 2 okay so from here when you simplify this you will get t, t is equal to small t is equal to capital t by 12 this is how you solve it okay fine so part c is the homework so if you are really interested you can do it uh, during the break time also as in now after the break we will continue with a new topic fine so let's come back after the break now we will meet at 11:27 am come back 
in time